Hey guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. So today I am going to do the last video in my little mini series here, um, introducing synth design. And uh, the only reason I wanted this to be the last one is because I kind of wanted to just cover some uh, basic fundamental groundwork things. And then from then on, uh, I just cover more so, you know, how to make uh, uh, just tips and tricks for uh, getting even more unique sounds or coming up with a new sound or something like that. So this is this video I, I'm going to be talking about, as I said in the last video, I'm going to be talking about how to make a really smooth flowing synthesizer. Last time I made a really punchy one. So you kind of see the comparison. This one's a lot smoother and this one's a lot punchier. So uh, I'm going to actually get rid of this one here, extend this back out. And we're gonna start from scratch again with the ES2. So I'm gonna pop this up, go back to the tutorial settings, analog, saw initialize, and everything's back to normal. So the first step into getting something that sounds really flowing is to turn on unison. Just because stereo space stuff does always sounds a lot smoother than mono stuff. So, um, so that's what that does. I'm gonna turn up the number of voices so that we don't have to worry about running out of voices here. We're, Cause I'm gonna start doing some other stuff that'll use up the number of max count of voices. Um, voices by the way, is not necessarily how many notes you can play at the same time. Because sometimes um, when you have things like release, the notes end up kind of pseudo overlapping. So they're not overlapping here, but they're actually, um, they're, they start to overlap in the synthesizer when it's playing them back. So you want to have the voices up at the maximum so you don't run out and it just starts to like cut out other voices. So like I said, first step, turn on unison. I'm going to turn the volume down here. So, And then analog also, I'll show you what this does, but this is uh, no analog. So we'll keep the analog there. That kind of sounds nice. So, um, so, so to make a really smooth synth synthesizer, one of the first things you could start doing, uh, other than those two, because I really like to do those for uh, smoother sounding synthesizers, is you could actually start to uh, is open up the attack, so make it so it's not as punchy in the beginning. And then the next obvious step, which is give it a lot of release. Now, another thing you could do that interestingly does actually help make it sound uh, smoother is turning down the sustain a bit and then making a long decay. So there's the basics there. You got uh, pretty much all I did was change this and uh, the uh, turn on unison and turn up the analog. So that's that's the basics of a smooth synthesizer. But what more can you do? So um, there's a couple things. First one has to do with the cutoff. So if you if I turn this down, you could tell that it's it's mapped like it like I was talking about before in the previous video that so that this will kind of go down. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this take longer to go down. So you can tell now it sounds a lot smoother. And if I turn down the maximum cutoff it could go to, it'll start to smooth it out even more. So that's, that's one of the things we could do there. We could basically, I'm just turning down the cutoff so that um, just like an EQ here, if I did a high cut and it was, then I just pull it down here and it gets rid of all the bright, harsh high end. And that always makes something sound smoother because uh, the, the high end is typically never smooth. It's always crispy, bright, and 
and uh, sometimes punchy and stuff like that. So, um, so that's one of the things you could do. And um, now another thing is adding chorus also helps, but that's more of an effect. I'll do that in a second. But the the next thing I want to do is show you series and parallel in ES2. I didn't talk about this before, and I think it's worth talking about here. So right now, the way the filters work is I have two filters: one that can change between a low pass, a high pass, a um, a peak or a band reject or a band pass. So um, these these are just various EQ types, but uh, long story short, they're just filters. And then this one's always a low pass filter. So right now, the way this is working is it kind of makes sense. All the oscillators go into this one and then into this one. But if you'll notice, they haven't been affected by this one, despite the fact that we have, uh, we could have changed some things here. So like I could. Okay, drive still is is affected by it, my bad, but otherwise that does nothing. That's because the blend knob up here is set to only do this one. So we could kind of balance between the two, but still, no matter how much we balance it, it always goes into this one and then into this one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually flip this here and change it to parallel. Now what happens is one copy of all this audio goes through this one and one copy goes through this one. But right now it's all only set to the one that we did before. Make sense? So I'm gonna pull this over so we could just listen to this one. It's that band pass right now, that's why it sounds like that. So if I go low pass, basically what we were at originally. So what I wanna do now is I wanna actually make this one a band pass, except for instead of really bright, I'll turn it down. There we go. So that sounds rather smooth as opposed to... And if I turn this to a steeper cut... So this one just kind of adds like a, a flowing background almost. So it's starting to sound pretty smooth here. I think I'm gonna open up the uh, this here. And then I'm gonna make the attack a lot longer so it sounds like this. Now there's a couple other things we could do. So the first one is if you if you uh, add another waveform here and you make it a sine or sometimes a triangle. So I'm just gonna set this to a sine. And you can tell that already makes like a really ringing kind of, oh, but still smooth sound. So I'm gonna drop this down an octave, see what this does, this might be what I want. Let me turn this off. Now, alternatively, I could turn this up to here. This might be where I want it. So you just kind of see there that this one adds more of less of the uh, the bite of a saw and kind of gives it a little more uh, a little more body and a little more kind of like flowing sound. So I can go. If I change it so it's not a saw, it automatically goes to something very smooth. I like the sound of that. Now, um, there's a couple other things we do. Actually, I'm going to pop up one more oscillator, set this one to also sign. I'm just going to pitch it up an octave. So that's a very nice pad. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is the chorus. Chorus, and uh, also if you go into the other plugins here, there's the assemble, which 
modulation assemble. This one also works very well, uh, but I'm just gonna show you the chorus here because it's really easy to use. So I'm just gonna turn up the intensity really high. And I could change the speed of this to suit my taste. So now we got like this really nice flowing pad and it sounds pretty darn good. Um, so uh, that's pretty much, I think, pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this episode. There's some other things you could do, tics, trips, tricks and tips. Um, so let me just pop up the analyzer here. I imagine there's going to be a peak somewhere around here. Nope, it's going to be like right here. Um, ha! See, I was right. So one of the things you could do here is you could find the part where it rings and clips and you could turn that down. And then just like basically. So it kind of gets rid of some of the ring. So that's pretty nice. So in the end, we ended up with a, with a pad instead of, you know, just going from how to make your uh, synth sound smoother to all the way to one of those really flowing pads. So, you know, basically everything that I did here is kind of what you could take away by way of how to make your um, your synth sound smoother. So, you know, like I started off with the, uh, the envelope here for the volume, you know, you just have a a longer attack and you have a really long release and it sounds kind of smooth and then the cutoff is very essential in getting that uh, smooth sound also and um, and so just varying the amount like if you want a sort of smooth synthesizer then just don't go to all the extremes that I did in this one like instead of uh, having all everything closed up just See, all I did was open up the cutoff and it's still smooth, but it doesn't have like that, that underwater sort of feel. So, you know, it, it really just tweak stuff around, have fun. Um, you'll, you'll see what you, you know, you'll run into some interesting things and you'll see what you like. And, um, uh, you could just kind of take the particular things you learned from this and, um, and, you know, just implement them in the ways you want to implement them. So I don't think that you have to follow this for every single synthesizer you're doing. It's more of just when you want a smooth sound, just kind of take some of the things that I did here and figure out what kind of smooth sound do I want to add. And then based off of that, you know, do something to it. So um, series in parallel here, that's the thing. That thing might be a little bit confusing, the whole twisting of everything and, uh, and, um, getting uh, the, the two different, the band, oh, by the way, I didn't show you what a band pass looks like. Um, so let me reset this to default, recall default. So this is what a band pass looks like. It looks like that. And I can't sweep it along the spectrum because it requ would require grabbing both of them. But essentially what it does when you pull it down is it does this and it just kind of moves it somewhere else. So, um, so if you, if you, So that's basically what the band pass is doing and I'll kind of show you here, just sweep through it. So this is exactly what I was showing you. It either, it cuts out both highs and lows, but it depends on, you know, how much it cuts out, it cuts out depends on where it's placed. This it's cutting out mostly the highs, this it's cutting out mostly the lows. So, um so yeah, yeah, the different types of filters. I don't know exactly how band reject works. I think peak is the I think um peak is the same as having an EQ like that, not actually like that, more like this, and then just sweeping it up and down like that. I think that's mostly what peak does, if I recall correctly. 
and um, and high pass is just a high pass. Um, low, uh, no wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. High that's high pass and low pass. So yeah, um, the so. Yep, there's a lot of stuff in this video. You might want to watch it twice if you didn't catch everything because chances are some of the stuff you already forgot uh, just because I covered a lot so fast. But the deal is, um, you know, it's it's mostly just kind of a whole bunch of collective tips on how to make a smooth sounding synthesizer. So um, so hopefully that, that helped you a little bit and uh, kind of gave you an idea about how to do that. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do for videos following this. I might do a series on vocals because I know vocals are something that a lot of people have trouble on. I had trouble mixing vocals for a long time. So uh, I think I might just uh, cover that. Um, in the next series here. So I'm not 100% sure. If you guys have any suggestions for a little mini series you'd like me to do, feel free to throw them in the comments because uh, I'm always looking for like, you know, what you guys want because honestly, it's kind of useless if I'm just doing the videos I want to do because you guys are the ones learning. So if you're not learning what you want to learn, then what's the point of my channel? So <laughs> if you guys have any suggestions, please, please, please just throw them in the in the comments below. Um, and uh, really, it, it, it's a great opportunity for you to get to, you to learn what you want to learn and for me to know exactly where I'm going and what I'm doing next. Because most of the time, it's just kind of um, if I'm able to pick a mini series, I just do videos based off that premise. Um, otherwise it's kind of, kind of like, Oh, what am I going to do for the next video? So, you know, I have a lot of things that I could do. It's just, I don't want it to be a discombobulated mess of various videos thrown around with no particular connection between any of them. So anyway, uh, a lot of rambling there, but really, um, I'd like to hear you guys feedback and what you'd like to see, because that really helps me, uh, you know, kind of get direction for this channel so that we could uh we could all just benefit from this and uh and really enjoy this so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video